OK, uh, so this week we are talk about how we can extract uh, the data from website and also into Python uh, and also save the result into our uh, relational database. Um, so we have already learned that how the basics of the HTML, we know that uh, so the website that have a database that they render their result into their website and by using those HTML um, uh, language and also our browser can run the information of those HTML to those nice pages. And what we are going to do is that we are going to write a Python code okay, so that we we'll analyze the web, web page and also we we'll grab information to Python and next we are going to pass that one to our uh, relational database. Okay. So basically, by doing that way, we can gather information that from different resources. And again, so the, those those information should be public. And also, you should always check the robots.txt file so that to make sure that um, it is allowed for you to gather information in that way. OK, uh, so before I start, let's uh, review some basics of the H uh, Python stuff and also uh, let's try something in our notebook. So uh, so here, so uh, let's go to our AWS Educate Classroom and also find out this classroom and also we open start our instance. Um, once your instance is ready and as I said the best practice is that make sure that we synchronize our uh, a notebook on our instance with the notebook on our GitHub page. So, so before we start, let's make sure that we synchronize with our uh, GitHub by going to the uh, Jupyter Lab and also let's do a pull. And because I did nothing change, so that we can see there's nothing change. Okay, so that means okay. So now we are on the same page as. Uh, the one that on the GitHub. So if you, uh, so we all have a GitHub page here. So that means that everything is on the same page. Great. So let's continue. So now let's open on, on our uh, notebook instance, and here we can see everything that was here. So it's still here. So especially the configure.ini file. So that contains those sensitive information and which we didn't synchronize or publish shared on GitHub. Everything else is shared and also published on GitHub, even those PNG file. Okay, even this PNG file. Okay, uh, so let's create a new notebook. And then we are going to use Condo Python 3. And uh, let's call it Lecture 6. Okay. OK, so let's make sure that is ready and let's review some basics of the Python. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is the if statement. So if statement is used to, for the conditional execution so that when we are going to try, um, try to compare the variables, the values of different variables in Python, so we can use if. And the syntax is that if some condition is true, um, colon, and also remember there are uh, white space or the indentations and we can execute this code. If this is false, then we will not execute this code. If this is true, then we will execute this code. Uh, we can also combine if statement with l if, so that means if this one is false, and we are going to compare this part. So if that's true, we are going to execute this part, this code. If, if this one is false, then we will skip this part. And finally, so if everything else are false, and we are going to execute this part. So that is else statement. OK, so that is if else statement. Um, and also remember that empty list, empty set, empty dictionary, uh, empty string, number 0, float 0, integer 0, and also none, the special type none, are all kind of false. OK, so they are all kind of false. Uh, so let's see this example. So we say, OK, if now we print now 
and that will not be printed because none is considered false. And if zero, we print zero, and that will also not be printed because zero is considered false. Remember here. Then if empty string, we print empty string, so that will not be executed because empty string is also considered false. L if negative zero, and negative zero will be printed because negative zero is not considered false. Okay, uh, so that the result will be the negative zero. Okay, and so you can try it on your own uh, notebook. So uh, I'm going to skip this one because we should have already learned this one from the uh, Python class. Okay, and also the other uh, in split and also strip functions that um, in Python. So those are some functions that used to compare the variables in variables in a string. So for example, in function can check whether or not an item is in the list or is in a string. Okay, so for example, we can say, okay, print hello in the hello world. And because hello is in this hello string, so we will have the result that is true. Okay. And the split function will split a string based on the separator that uh, we define here. And also the result, all the items that split will go into a, into a list. Okay, so that will go to a list. So for example here, we say print a hello comma word dot split. So we call split function split by this comma. So this string will be split into two items. So hello will go to the first item in this list and the word will go to the second item into this list. Okay, so that is the split function. Strip function will be used to strip, to cut off all the spaces at the start and also end of the string. Okay, so it's, it's kind of like used for the data cleaning. So for example, here we have the test and also we have spaces that at the end of this, um, string so if you use print this one dot strip and we'll have a very clear uh, test uh, string so that without any spaces that in front or at the end okay so those are very helpful uh, functions those are also built-in functions in python and that we are going to use that one to uh, um, analyze and also clean uh, the data that are from those HTML pages. Okay. So now let's go to the GitHub. Um, so let's try something that on the, what, what we just test, uh, said. So let's say you try print, uh, hello. So let's say hello in this hello world. So because hello is in this string, so we'll have the true result. And if we say, okay, print hi, and we'll have the false result. And let's try the split. So print, let's say, hello, comma, word. And dot split. So if we don't specify anything, so the default, it will split based on the space. So here you can see we have the result that the first one is hello and second one is word. However, if we specify that we want split based on comma, and now you can see that the first one will be only word, and also the second one will, the first one will be hello, and also the second item is word. Okay. And let's try the strip. Say print. If we see test, have some spaces. And in this result, so you can see that we do have some spaces. However, if we use dot strip, and next we write. And if you double click, and you can see that there's only test and there's no spaces. So those are some very helpful and also useful functions that can help us clean the data 
and also can help us identify the result that we want when we collect it from the websites.